My mom, Bev, my dad, TJ, uh, my sister, Brooke, and myself. And we were just looking for a way to spend some time together as a family. My dad was a glazer, and my mom was lucky enough to be able to stay home with my sister and I. And my parents recognized that I didn't really know my dad very well. He was gone at work before, before we got up, and he was coming home after we went to bed already. So <clears throat> their first thought was to explore the option of buying a pontoon boat and floating down the river. <laughs> so when they found a boat they liked, they called, they called a certain fella. I have no idea what his name is. Um, and he didn't call us back. So no pontoon boat, no good pontoon boat to buy. What do we do? My dad has a lot of history in racing. He raced snowmobiles, midgets, motocross, all kinds of forms of motorsports. I've never met a guy that loves racing this much. And <clears throat> so there was somebody in our neighborhood that raced go-karts. So we tr took a trip down the street and, and went into their little shed, checked out the go-karts, went out to our local track and watched them race uh, in uh, Broadhead, Wisconsin. And, um, and actually, a track called Sugar River Raceway. They love it when I say their name. So, uh, Sugar River Raceway. <laughs> and it looked like fun. There was, like, lots of kids, and, uh, you know, my dad was into it, and it was really my sister who wanted to do it. And I just, like, and, and if any, any of you have kids, you can't let one do it and not the other. So I was the other one in this situation, and I just didn't want to get left out. So I said I would do it too. And um, so I was, uh, I was go-kart number 10. That was the, that was the number I picked from, from day one in go-karting, which is why it's so cool and why I picked the number 10 in Sprint Cup with, with Stuart Haas. So that's the significance there. So we got the go-karts together, and we went out the back of my parents' shop, uh, and there's a big parking lot. So we took every can we could find, spray can, Coke can, you name it. And we set it all up in a big circle, and my sister and I went out for a ride. So we're going around, going around, it's really fun, wave to the camera, probably not, keep going. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I went to go hit the brake, and I have no brake. So without boring you on technical details, uh, <clears throat> given my 10-year-old inexperience, what did I do? I went straight. I decided to not continue to turn or spin or do something that would have been far less damaging. I went straight, and I was headed straight for a trailer, which would have taken my head off. So I veered to the left and went straight into a concrete building, hit the wall, cart up in the air, twisted, bruises all over, and I guess if there was any point in time that I could have said, I'm scared and I don't want to do this, that would have been a pretty good one, I think. But I didn't, I didn't want to quit. I wanted to keep going. Dad bought another go-kart, so thank you, Dad, for spending the money for another go-kart, and uh, which is actually where my mom picked up racing. But anyway, um, so, we, uh, so, so I got out there and we started racing right away. And man, I was terrible. <laughs> my sister and I were, couldn't even keep up on the parade laps, which is those ones where you go really slow at the beginning. But I just kept practicing and practicing, and my dad tells me the story now. I don't remember this, but all I wanted to do was go, go out on the, on the weekdays. There was a Wednesday practice, and I, just, I wanted to go out every single Wednesday and, and go testing. And I just loved to see the improvement and... It's very easy with racing because it's a lap time. And uh, you're getting better is quite obvious, which is probably why I like to do other things that cause instant gratification, like ironing and cleaning up, but <laughs> not like dieting. That's not instant gratification. And I got really good. And by the end of my first year, I almost won the championship in my first year, even with those first few races that were, I'm sure, spectacular. Um, and that, that progression and that hard work continued, and by the end of seven years of go-karting, you actually found some stats that I could not find on the internet. I was trying like heck to find how many races have I won in go-karting, how many championships did I win, and I, so I had to make a guess, and I figure I probably won, I don't know, one year I won almost 40 in one year, so I'm betting I probably won at least over 100 races, 
and I'm betting between 10 and 15 regional and national championships. So um, I had some, some incredible success. But something that, uh, the, that also started to happen was I was starting to get some media attention. So it was pretty, pretty fun for a little kid to have cameras following her down the halls of, the, of her high school. So uh, the first program that I was on was this, uh, this show for ABC called Passion to Play, Making of a Champion. And you might be familiar with some other names that were in it. It was myself. We were 14 years old. It was myself, a figure skater named Tara Lipinski, and a certain girl named Anna Kornikova. <laughs> and so I remember being 14 and having a, a Sunday party for Danica's show, and all my friends rode their bicycles over. It was awesome. <laughs> And there I was on Sunday afternoon special primetime TV. Uh, then, not far after that, MTV was following me down the halls of my high school. And I felt pretty cool. Uh, but at no point did I really think that it was because I was a girl. Because I was always taught to just strive to be the best. It wasn't about being the best girl. It was about being the best. And that's what I was doing. Since I didn't want to be a professional go-kart driver, I wanted to be a professional race car driver. I wanted to get moving right away. So at 16 years old, based on some of the people that I had met over the years, I had the opportunity to move to England and race cars. And this was a place that I was told all the best race car drivers go from all over Europe. And I could learn more in one year in England than five years in the States. And I said, well, sign me up. You mean I have to leave high school? Sign me up again. <laughs> you mean I, my parents aren't going to be living with me? Double sign me up. So, uh, but that, that novelty did wear off. And uh, it, was, um, it became really hard. I, when I first moved over there, I was sleeping on a couch and racing on the weekends. And it, it just wasn't going that well. Uh, and why? Why I had come from such, such success? Was it, was it because I was the newest driver on a race team? Was it because I was an American on a British team? Or was it because I was a girl, maybe? Maybe it was because I was a girl in a boy's sport. And it was really the first time that I started to feel different or out of place. And it really started to make me uh, doubt myself, doubt my abilities. It made me really sad and really depressed, as if the lack of sun wasn't enough to do that. <laughs> and, and it was a difficult time for me, for sure. It was very character building. Um, but I stuck with it and hung in there. And, uh, and you touched on it, but the Formula Ford Festival is a race in England that's held every year. And uh, there are over 100 or so entries every year in this race, and it's the the best Formula Ford drivers from all over Europe, not just the ones that are racing in the, in the British Championship, everyone. And they all come together for this event. And uh, <clears throat> I had the ability to, I, I got a great hand-me-down. The guy who won the championship was on our team, and he was getting a new race car for the Formula Ford Festival. So I acquired the championship car, and I made the most of it. And I went out, and I finished second in the festival, which was not only the highest for an American, not only highest for a girl, but it was the highest for an American. I did this in the year 2000, and uh, the, uh, the previous, the previous um, uh, owner of that title was a guy named Danny Sullivan, and he did it in 1974. So, so 